Okay, let's do a little bit of a, uh, let's actually evaluate some limits. Okay, the, the, the first uh, and probably best thing you should do is what's called just direct substitution. Okay, so basically we're looking at the function f of x equals 10 minus 3x. And let's just sketch it out real quick. That's, it probably looks something like that, you know. This would be y intercept 10. Okay, so we're, we're, what, we're, what we're doing it is we're just going to basically find f of 6. We're just going to plug 6 in for x and see what happens. Okay, if we do that, we'll find out. I mean, I know this seems fairly obvious, okay, but I, we just want to take it one step at a time. Okay, so if we, if we plug... You know, if we plug 6 in for x, we get negative 8. And that's basically what the function is doing. As x approaches 6 for, you know, this function f of x, um, it's, it's, the function itself is approaching negative 8. Okay? And now it just so happens that f of 6 is also equal to negative 8, but try, to, try not to confuse f of 6 for the limit as x approaches 6, because we'll, we'll find out... Um, you know, as we go on, that may not always be the case, okay? And if, if um, it'll really hurt you if you, you know, can't uh, really kind of kind of take these, you know, systematically look at these things, okay? So let's do another one. Okay, and we'll have... Okay, so... I have a function right here. Um, I guess I could go ahead and use the substitution. Um, there would be nothing wrong with that. Um, but I want to go ahead and I want to simplify this first. Okay, so let me just distribute the 3t inside there and then we'll take a look at it. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this uh, lim. Okay, because technically we haven't evaluated the limit yet. So um, we, we need to keep that nearby. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll get 6 t squared minus 3t. Now I'm going to take one extra step here. Um, there's a section in your book called Limit Laws. I would, even on these really simple ones, I would probably go ahead and kind of break these things down. Oops. Just like I did not do right there. That's supposed to be a limit. Because when you get to more complicated functions, uh, it'll help you out. So basically what we're doing, we're taking the limit of the first one and we're subtracting the limit of the second one, okay? And another step you could do, I'm not gonna do it, it it'd be a little redundant, but you could pull the constant out, okay? So you know, if, if this turned out to be a mess somehow, uh, and maybe you know, pulling the six out would have canceled some things, you know, just, just kinda, kinda think about that, okay? so. Well, I'm going to go ahead and make my substitution now so I don't need to carry the limit sign any further. Okay, so we don't have to do that. We're just going to take 6 and we're going to take 2 thirds squared subtracted from 3. Okay, and now we'll do some simplification. So we got 6 times 4 ninths minus 2 because the 3's just really cancel out. Okay, so what do we get here? We This is 2 thirds, the 6 ninths, so that is equal to, if that's 2 thirds, then we get 8 thirds minus 2, which is really just 6 thirds. So it looks like, um, you know, we're back to uh, 2 thirds on that one, okay? Back to 2 thirds on that one. Let's do another one. Let's take a look at the limit as z goes to 10 of 1 over z minus 10. Ooh, a little tricky, okay? Tricky thing about that, well, let, let's, again, let's, before we even really do any anything with the limit, let's look at this function. This is, I mean, by the way, being able to sketch these things out will really help you. Okay, this is just a rational function, isn't it? Okay, it kind of looks like 1 over x, except, you know, it's shifted over to the right 10 units. 
So if, 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 we know, if we look at what happens as x goes to 10, or as z goes to 10, then we have, you know, this, well, this portion goes to negative infinity. This goes to positive infinity, okay? So, you know, if we, if we went and plugged it in, we'd end up with this 1 over 0, okay? So what we're, what we're going to say on this right here, I mean, there's, there's really no way around it. I mean, this, this, this function just does not have a limit, okay? So we say that the limit does not exist. Okay, it's just it just, it goes infinity in this direction, and from this direction it goes down to negative infinity. There's just really nothing we can say about it. And furthermore, you know, remember this is this is the first step in looking at you know the rate of change of a function. So, well, you know, what rate of change does this function have right here? This z one over z minus n. I mean, it, there's it, it's a, it's called a vertical asymptote. Okay, so the, there is no rate of change there. So, so it would make sense that the limit uh, doesn't exist there, okay? So that is, um, that's just basically some uh, really simple algebraic limits. And you know, I mean, you might even have already known how to do those, but uh, we'll, get a, we'll get a little more involved in the next video.